cataractcoach.com. Faco with a dense corneal opacity. How do you complete this case? What about the IOL calculations? Let's watch. Now, there's a very dense corneal opacity. So some people may say, well, why don't you just do a combined procedure? Do a corneal transplant plus a cataract at the same time. Well, believe it or not, patients can sometimes have these kind of corneal opacities and still have reasonably good vision. And it's a very reasonable approach to first try doing just the cataract surgery and see how the patient uh, does, what vision is achieved. And if the patient's happy, then you're done. And then if you need to down the road, you could do a corneal transplant. Now, a good way of determining that is ask the patient, what was your vision like 10 years ago? So let's say the scar's been there for 30 years. Well, how was your vision 10 years ago? Because you probably didn't have much cataract then. And if the vision was good enough and you were happy enough, then the better part of judgment is to just do the cataract surgery like we're doing here. Now, the tripan blue dye is helpful to improve visualization, especially in a case like this where, you know, almost half the cornea is obscured by that dense corneal opacity. So there's a nice looking rexus. On a case like this, I like to get the lens nucleus out of the bag in order to emulsify it. And the reason I do that is because the cataract is not very dense, and also I want to stay away from the capsule. You're going to have a hard time visualizing the capsule. Now, if you're an experienced surgeon like we have here, an expert surgeon, then certainly you know what you're doing, and you can still operate within the bag and still do your technique very safely to remove that nucleus. So some good hydrodissection there. There's some more viscoelastic to protect what's left of the cornea. And now here comes the phaco probe. So I like operating in that one area by making the phaco incision where the scar is. That was smart because now you operate in front of the phaco probe tip, right? You don't operate behind it. So now the critical area where you're operating is unobscured. That's the clear part of the cornea. And that really was a great idea. Now at the end though, that cornea incision may not seal up so well because remember, it's not, not a normal cornea. You have a scar there, there may be some endothelial loss. And remember, with our main phaco incision in most routine cases, we're relying on that corneal endothelial pump function to initially help us seal up that incision. And that may not be so strong here. So putting a suture in at the end of the case is probably a good idea. And by the way, I'm watching the video for the first time with you. Now let's talk about lens calculations. What would you do for lens calcs? Well, I'd look carefully at the central cornea, central three, four millimeters of the cornea. What's the average corneal power in that central zone? And if you have any doubts, choose a lower corneal power. Why? Because when you do the lens calculations, that'll cause you to choose a slightly higher power IOL. If the cornea is a little weaker, then the IOL needs to be a little bit stronger. And therefore, the error is going to be on the side of myopia. You'd much rather this patient end up minus one as opposed to upper fraction instead of plus one, right? That makes sense. Now, when you calculate which formula should you use, well, you need to use a formula where you enter an anterior chamber depth. If you use an old formula like Hopper Q, Holiday 1, or SRKT, those formulas use the keratometry and the axial length alone to guess what's going to be the anterior chamber depth and therefore what's the effective lens position. But imagine this eye, that corneal scar could cause a lot of flattening there. Let's say the corneal power can be 37 or 38 diopters, much lower than you expect. Well, these formulas may then figure out that this AC depth is different than it actually is. So therefore, use a formula that you input the AC depth. That would be lattice super formula at iowacalc.com. That'll be Barrett. That'll be Hagus. That'll be Holiday 2. All these formulas require the input variable of anterior chamber depth in addition to keratometry and axial length. And therefore, you can be a lot more accurate. And again, aim for low myopia. I like the bimanual approach here to remove the cortex, especially that subincisional area where the visualization is limited. There comes the single piece of acrylic lens going in the caps or bag making sure that goes in nicely, beautiful result here. And now take out the visc glass we can finish up this case. So this is a tough case, and the tough part of the case is not that the cataract was super dense, but rather that the visualization is so poor because of that corneal scar there. But I think patients like this, you'll be surprised. I've done many surgeries in patients like this where just doing the cataract surgery is enough to give them very satisfactory vision and make them very happy. Now here at the end of the case, you want to just hydrate the incisions and be done, right? Yeah, but remember we've talked about that cornea may not be totally normal where the incision is, and you may not have great endothelial pump function there. It may not seal very well. The better part of judgment here may be to put a suture in. Now, when you're doing this kind of case, you judge for yourself and determine. So here the surgeon did some hydration, maybe a little more hydration, checking the incision, 
And again, if you have any doubt, oh, there's the iris prolapsing. That's a sign that you definitely want to put a suture in here. So trying to seal the incision more, that looks pretty good. The iris back inside the eye. Make sure we reposit the iris into position. You can go through the side port and sweep in a subincisional area to make sure you don't have iris coming up to the incision. Very important. Remember, the iris, it's kind of like the omentum in the abdomen. When there's a leak somewhere and you get an abdominal issue, the omentum goes and plugs up the hole. Well, the iris kind of does the same thing. So you want to make sure there's no iris trapped in that incision. And there's the 10 nylon. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Very nice. I like that. I also like that air bubble in the AC at the end of the case. That's going to help ensure that the things are going to go well. You're not going to have iris prolapse as you suture the incision. So nicely past suture there. Time to tie that up. And here I'd make sure it's tied up pretty securely. One suture probably ought to do it. And then this patient is going to have a beautiful post-op outcome. Really great case. Thank you for sharing this case. You are a fantastic surgeon and the patient had a beautiful outcome. Remember, there's so much more material on cataractcoach.com. I'm surprised at how many YouTube viewers don't realize there's a free cataractcoach.com PDF book for learning cataract surgery. There's a 25-part curriculum series on cataractcoach.com. But you got to leave YouTube just for a second. Go there, download the free book. You can have it on your phone. When you're sitting there wasting some time, you can actually learn cataract surgery instead. Check it out.